Well, good evening. How are you doing this evening? Hope you're having a, a really good day and a good week. Things are going well for you. Um, we'll start tonight, as we always do, with our prayer sheet. Look at some of our prayer needs. And, uh, of course, you know, we got a big old list. And that's for, this is a tool for you. And I'll encourage you to make sure Katrina has your email if you'd like to have this prayer sheet for Wednesday nights. I'm just gonna look down this list and uh, call out a couple of names maybe that might jump out at me. It doesn't mean the others are less important. I just don't think you want me to read the whole list to you. Uh, we've got some surgeries coming up. Ben Hammond will be having surgery at the end of the month. Uh, the uh, people having tests and different things we've got to of course, Carl Lato with his cancer, he's got a battery of tests over the next couple of weeks as they figure out for sure what kind of treatment to give him. Uh, uh, covet your prayers for him and Sue because they're going through a really challenging time and uh, it's really difficult. Also, Pete Huddleston, who lives right over here by the church, he also has cancer uh, and I uh, understand he is terminal. Um, boy, there's just a lot of cancer on here. Patty Roysden uh, is listed on here. Sharon Slavin, Gerald Story, Arnold Troxell. Um, I see Melanie Winningham. I see Elizabeth Bone. I see Ricky Anderson. I see Emma Gooding, Tim Guffey, Carol Huddleston. Um, there's probably some more. Folks, cancer's among us. It's a terrible disease. COVID gets all the press, but we have people all around us that are suffering with cancer and are fighting that fight. And they need our prayers because it is a source of anxiety and it's a source of uh, just the treatments can be so difficult. So we need to pray for them. And there's other people with other sicknesses. There are certainly those with COVID, some I've heard about today. I need to pray for those that have uh, lost uh, loved ones. I'll mention uh, Dere Hand, that's Steve uh, Hand's mother passed away. Her funeral will be Friday. Uh, Steve Hand is uh, married to Barbara, who is Shirley Rich's daughter. And then the family of Peggy Cobb, our nursing home folks. Think of our missionaries around the world. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot about our Indian missionaries because those are the, the ones I think we're the most engaged with as far as uh, international missionaries. But I uh, pray for them the, that they'll have joy. They, they ask for prayer. If you ask them what they want, they want our prayers. That's the first thing they want. Financial support is great and they need that too. But they ask for prayer. And I guess, guarantee every missionary wants prayer. Pray for our uh, church that we'd continue to grow. I still need some leaders on Wednesday nights for uh, 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 children in action is what we're gonna call it. That's a combination of RAs, GAs, it's co-ed for kids. As soon as we get enough workers and get them trained, we're gonna launch a, a massive program for Wednesday night for our children. That might be you. I really would like to, I've got two young couples that uh, are gonna be willing to serve, but. Uh, you know, we need a deep bench on that because we want to start this program and make sure it stays intact. I, I really would like to see some an older couple maybe, or older person, get involved with that as well, just because uh, sometimes it's good to have kind of a grandpa, grandma uh, point of view, or great aunt, great uncle, how about that? Uh, but anyway, uh, continue to pray for our church, other churches and pastors, Pray for our community, pray for our, all of the people that take care of us, uh, our EMTs, our health people, uh, the government people, folks that are making decisions on our behalf. Pray for wisdom, pray for discernment. Uh, also, I want you to think about, as, as we ought to every single Wednesday night, think about the lost people in your community, near your home, in, on your job, at the workplace. Folks, when the Lord comes back, when we're thinking backwards on our lives, the only thing that's really gonna remain 
of those things that we've done for Christ and what and how we interact with other people. So it's really important that we pray for others and we try to reach out, show them the love of Christ. There's just a ton of things to pray for. And uh, folks, uh, it's overwhelming to us, but not to him. Our God is big and he can handle it all. And I say that every week because it's true every week. Whatever's going on in your life, if you've lost a loved one, if you're facing tests, uh, the Lord Jesus is big enough to take care of any issue that comes your way. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll have our devotion time. Lord God, I pray for these that we've mentioned tonight and also those that we have not mentioned. Lord, I just pray that in every case you would uh, show yourself strong, you would uh, be evident to them. I pray at every turn in all the lives of our people and the people that we know that, Lord, more than ever before, Christ would be exalted and edified and everyone would uh, just encounter you constantly in the effects of your love and, and uh, your salvation. Lord, we want to see people saved. I pray that Moodyville will continue to be a church about the gospel and that we'll increase our efforts and we'll do even more. Lord, I just pray for us. I pray for all the people listening tonight or watching tonight. I pray whatever prayer needs they have in their life, Lord, uh, that, first of all, they can mention them right now to you. They don't need me to pray for them or to, to they don't have to come through me to get to you. Lord, I let them know that you're there. You're ready, willing, and able to be part of their life and to work in their life in a big way to provide comfort, peace, joy, support, strength, whatever it is they need. You've got it. So, Lord, I just pray for all of us tonight. Lord, let us be very close to you. Let us have a fresh touch of your spirit. And let us all be just encouraged and, and uh, motivated, Lord, to reach out to the world around us and show your love. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done through this church, with this church, and because of this church. And I have confidence that uh, you're just getting started. Lord, let us be obedient and faithful as your people. In Christ's name, amen. Let me uh, mention just a couple of things. Next Wednesday night at 6.30, we're going to have an Operation Christmas Child work night. So if you can be here, I hope you will be. Uh, come in and help us prepare for packing those shoe boxes, which will be on November 7th on a Sunday. Um, this Saturday, the 23rd, we're having a uh, the Riverside Baptist Association annual meeting. I hope you'll be in prayer for that. If you want to go with me, give me a call and, uh, and we'll go. We're serving lunch, so it'll be a good time. And then finally, on uh, October 30th, a week from this Saturday, we will be down at Birdstown Activities Park doing a, uh, or taking part in Dell Halloween, connecting with our community. Well, tonight, I want to talk just for a minute about being overwhelmed. Have you ever been overwhelmed? When uh, things get really difficult in our lives and hard to handle, uh, it causes stress and we can be filled with anxiety. And I want to clarify for you tonight, if you have never heard me say this or you've never thought about it, but folks, I want you to understand that worry and anxiety are different uh, from fear. Um, stress and anxiety are different than worry and fear. I don't know if I said that right the first time. Let me say it again. Stress and anxiety are different from worrying and being filled with fear. Anxiety comes on you from a place deep in your mind. You can't control anxiety. Anxiety, anxiousness is a physical and emotional, almost psychic response to something that your body, your body's reacting to something that's usually overwhelming. You're not equipped to handle it. Uh, it's tough. And the Bible shows us examples of anxiety and of people that are overwhelmed. There were times when David was overwhelmed, King David. Uh, he was overwhelmed by his sin when his little baby, what, he was told that baby was going to die as a result of his of David's sin. And it overwhelmed him. He, he laid on the floor. He, fa he fasted. He prayed. And uh, he begged God to spare the life of that little boy. And of course, God didn't. He took him. And uh, David had to get up and clean himself up and get over it and move on. 
But the Bible shows us some other things. And I think the best example to examine anxiety and stress and how to deal with it is to look at the life of the Lord Jesus. So look at with me for a minute here in Mark chapter 1. I want to look at the Lord Jesus and some things that happened in his life and how he handled it. Mark chapter 1, if you look at verse 32, says that even or in the evening when the sun did set, they brought unto him, brought unto Jesus, all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. All the city was gathered at the door, a bunch of people. They were just pressing in on him. He healed many that were sick of different diseases. He cast out many devils. He suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Uh, he, he wasn't ready to be completely revealed. It says, in the morning, now the next day, in the morning, rising up a great while before day, very early in the morning, Jesus gets up. He went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they found him, they said, All men seek you. All men, are, everybody's looking for you. And he said unto them, Let's go to the next towns that I might preach there also. For therefore came I forth. In other words, there's the reason I'm here. That's my mission. Now listen, I know that the Lord Jesus is God. And even here on the earth, it's hard for, when he was here on the earth, it was hard for us to really comprehend in his being you know he was man and he was god and i've heard it described that he was just as much god as he was man and just as much man as he was god and i know he can handle uh everything anything but you got to remember that he gave up a lot to become a man and so what he did was he took on himself all of the things that we deal with he took on our uh, emotions he took on our uh, the way our psyche is he limited his power and his glory so he could be a man and be here and the bible tells us that in every way that we are tested and tempted and all the things that we feel that he felt all those things and that includes stress and anxiety we see here in mark that he was working really hard he was having stressful days. He was doing things. It was an emotional strain and drain on him to engage with all those people. And I, I can relate to that. There are times when, you know, I have to, uh, or not have to, I'm supporting, you know, our people and different things they're going through. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, it, it takes a, a lot more out of you than you would expect it to. Because after all, I'm not the one going through whatever they're going through. But just being there and being empathetic and, and being concerned about that, it can drive or draw a lot of energy out of you and, and a lot of things. And so this is what was going on with the Lord. And I'm not comparing myself to him. I'm just saying I understand that feeling. Uh, and so what did he do? What did he do when he got to the end of this stressful day when he was warned? It says he gets up the next day in the morning. He got alone with God. He, he separated himself and spent time in prayer. And so I, I wanna say to you tonight, if you're going through something in your life, if you're stressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you have waves of anxiety that come over you, because you're, again, you're overwhelmed, and overwhelmed means it's beyond your capacity. And so it's bigger than you are. You're not equipped to deal with it. That's why you feel anxiety. And, and I, you know, people love to, to quote the Bible where it says, you know, the Bible says, don't be anxious for anything. But that word there, it's really uh, talking about worrying, actively worrying and wringing your hands, making a decision to just, you know, and, and he's saying, don't do that, but trust the Lord. Put your weight, put your uh, trust in him. And so but people like to say, worry is a sin, worry is a sin. If you're worrying, you're full of sin. And that just puts more stress on you. And I'm here to tell you, anxiety is different than worry. Uh, but there's no magic formula to get rid of it. There are no special words you can say to make it all better. And I know you probably know people that preach differently that'll tell you that you can, you know, one time in prayer and if you've got enough faith and that's it. But uh, I'm going to show you something this this evening that may may convince you to agree with me if you want. But I'm going to tell you, you have to deal with moments in your life that are stressful, 
in the moment, moment by moment by moment. You have to, to engage the Lord and you have to turn your cares to him. In fact, 1 Peter 5 verse 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. And so this is a practice. This is something we've got to do often. And I see Jesus do this often in the Gospels. He didn't do it just once, and he's God. He's Jesus. But yet he continually would go to the Father in prayer. He would continually separate himself and spend time alone with God. And uh, this stress that would come on him, he dealt with it in that way. And, uh, and so when you look at this passage in Mark there, he's had a stressful day. He's got people pulling on him, and, and it's wearing him out. And, and you know it's got to be stressful to a point. He spends time with God. He's refreshed. And, and what does he say? He says, let's go on. We'll go to the next town. In other words, by casting his cares on God, by, by engaging him in prayer, God refreshed him to the point he was ready to carry on. And that's what you need when you're full of anxiety and, and you're overwhelmed. You need the strength of the Lord to help you mount up with wings as eagles and fly above whatever it is that's dragging you down. So we see Jesus refreshed here. Well, let me, let me just give you one more tonight about Jesus. It's another great example of Jesus under stress, having anxiety, and how he deals with it. And that is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is about to go to the cross. He knows what's coming. He knows what he's about to go through. And it puts so much pressure on him, so much stress, that there's some extreme words used to describe his condition. And so I want you to look at this with me. Look at Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to be right here in verse 36. I'm going to read uh, about eight verses. It says, now, now remember, Jesus is just about to go to the cross. They've had the last supper, and they've come down, and he wants to go into the garden in the evening to pray. And it says, Jesus comes with them to a place called Gethsemane. He says to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. Again, he separates himself to go spend time with the Lord, with God, in prayer. And he says, but he takes Peter and two sons of Zebedee, James and John. And what does it say? And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy, heavy, burdened. The weight of what was about to happen to him was bearing down on him. It created sorrow in the Lord Jesus. He was sorrowful. And he says to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. He says, I felt like I'm going to die because I've got such a concern about what's coming. He says, will you tarry here and watch with me? He's asking his friends to help. And it says in verse 39, Jesus went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I want or not as I will, but as you will. And it says he came to his disciples, they were sleeping. And he says, can, can you watch even an hour? And he says, watch and pray. And then he says he goes away the second time and he prayed. And he said, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. He's looking for that comfort and that confidence from the Lord. He came, found him asleep again. And it says that he left him and he went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Luke described the Lord Jesus as in such agony and distress that the way he was sweating, it was as if he was bleeding. And in fact, that's in Luke 22 and verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. He was getting more intense with his praying. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. The Bible says he was in agony. Jesus was suffering. It says that he repeated his words to the Lord, to the Father, three times. Now, I want you to think about that. I hear people say, and you know, I'm not going to keep bothering God with this. Or some people say, you know, if you got faith, you pray one and done. No, uh I don't buy it. The Lord Jesus had to keep coming back to the well. He had to keep falling in front of the Father and praying because he was in such distress and agony. He had anxiety about what he was about to, uh, to face. 
And so if the Lord Jesus, if he needed to continually go back to the Father, and he even needed to pray the same words over and over to find that comfort, to get that confidence to face the cross, why would you think you're any different? The comfort that you and I find in times of sorrow, anxiety, fear, uncertainty, and agony, folks, that comfort's going to come in prayer. But it isn't, I don't believe it's a, it's a once and done kind of thing. It's moment by moment. When you're going through something that's very stressful or very difficult that causes you to feel uh, anxiety, you have to go through it. And you've got these moments. You're going moment by moment by moment. If someone's passed away, you have the moment of their passing. That's a moment. And if it creates sorrow and, and anxiety and stress on you, then you, you think about, you know, now I've got to go to the funeral home, and, and that's a moment. And then you're like, I've got to be at the viewing and meet with people, and that's a moment. And then I've got the funeral. That's a moment. Then there's the internment. When we put them in the ground, that's a moment. All of those moments can create new waves of anxiety, and that's just one example. And so I say that we need to keep going back just like Jesus over and over. Lord, help me, help me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, I want to rely on you. And I just want to tell you that Jesus is ready to listen to you about your anxiety, about your sorrow, about your concerns. And the reason it is is because he understands. Uh, we don't have a high priest that's out of touch. He was tempted he was tested he was tried with every single thing every feeling every emotion that you and i experienced the lord jesus lived through he experienced and he is intimately aware of in other words he can relate to you no matter what you're going through in fact i love his invitation to you and to me to come to him it's in matthew chapter 11 if you look at verse 28 very familiar passage it says come unto me all you that heavy that labor and are heavy laden and he says i will give you rest take my yoke upon you learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls he says my yoke is easy my burden is light he invites you to come and to cast your cares and to cast your troubles on him but folks, don't feel bad when you go through a moment of, of, of the many steps of whatever it is that you're dealing with. And you go and you pray and you feel better. And then a new moment presents itself as part of that process. And some of those waves of anxiety, some of those uh, waves of sorrow come back over you. Man, don't put yourself down. Don't let Satan convince you that it's because you lack something. Be like the Lord Jesus. Return to prayer. Return to him and, and confess to him that you're afraid. Confess to him about the anxiety that's bothering you and ask him for help because he's faithful. He invites you tonight to come to him and he says, if you come to me, you will find rest. Well, I hope this is encouraging for someone tonight. If you are overwhelmed in life and something going on, I pray that you'll kneel right where you are and you will give a, a moment to the Lord and you'll spend time with him and let him give you rest. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for this day, for your blessings. Thank you for your word and your example. I pray for that person that's overwhelmed tonight, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to them and show them the way to peace and to rest. Lord, I, I just encourage all of us and pray that we will seek you often seek you early, and we will just allow you to, to uh, bring the comfort and peace and rest into our lives that many of us so desperately need tonight. Lord, bless all those in the sound of my voice and just uh, once again reveal to them that you are the great God that you are, that you love them. If they're lost, you'll save them. If they're a Christian, you'll comfort them and you'll help them. Lord, just whatever people need, just reveal to them that you are all things to all people. Lord, I love you and praise you for my salvation, for the salvation of those listening that are saved. And I just thank you for all that you're willing to do for us. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Have a good evening.